Good morning and welcome to worship from St John's Church this morning. The picture that I opened uh, the service with is a, a mural painted in Sudan and it's called Jesus Welcomes All. And in that picture, Jesus is opening his arms to children from different families and of different races, but calling them all towards him. And so this morning, that will be the theme of our service, that God welcomes all and that Jesus calls us to follow him. I'm going to start by lighting a candle and then I shall say the collect for this morning. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to start by singing a very simple and short song by John Bell. It's called God Welcomes All. And as we come to worship wherever we are, in our own homes, here in the village or further afield, we remember that, that God welcomes us and gathers us from both near and far as we turn our hearts and minds towards him. Let's say sorry to God using our prayer of confession. Loving God, we are sorry for the times we judge others and find them wanting. We are sorry that we turn away from your children in their need. We are sorry that we think we are too busy. We are sorry for the times our welcome has been lukewarm. Forgive us and help us to remember the warmth of your welcome. Help us to share your love with all people. Amen. And may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. I'm really pleased that Alison is going to talk to us this morning and I'm going to hand over to her now. Good morning everyone and it's really good to be with you. A glass of water. A day or so ago Brian and I went for a walk in the sand pits with our daughter Sarah and grandson Ralph. It had been a hot walk and when we got back to our garden for a drink, Sarah immediately said, please can I have a glass of water? There's something so refreshing and so reviving about cold, clear water, especially when the weather's hot and you're feeling a bit weary from chasing after a two-year-old. I wonder if you can think of a time when you were in need of a glass of water and someone gave it to you. Or perhaps a time when you were offered a glass of water to someone else when they needed it. And a glass or a cup of water would be something much appreciated if you were travelling around a hot, dry land like Galilee and weren't carrying any water with you. Water was not on tap then, but such was the tradition of hospitality in that place it wouldn't be unusual for a stranger in need of thirst-quenching water to knock on a door and ask for some and be given it, 
even though that water would have to be taken from the store that someone had collected for, from the, for the household from the local well. So let's hear how something as ordinary as a cup of water features in today's Gospel reading. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is the third part of the passage that we've been following over the last two Sundays. Jesus has been preparing his 12 disciples, getting them ready to go on their first mission without him. That mission was to share the gospel message, to heal people of diseases, to raise people from the dead and to cast out unclean spirits. No small task. But as if that wasn't difficult enough, the disciples were to go with only the clothes they stood up in, carrying no spares, no money, or food, or water. They were to rely on the hospitality of strangers in the places they went to. Much of the middle part of the passage consists of warnings and difficulties and threats of the danger that will accompany their mission. But then Jesus concluded with today's passage with words that were perhaps more inspiring, more encouraging, more uplifting for the disciples. He told them that they would be his representatives. Their mission was to be continuous with Jesus' own mission. Whoever welcomed them, welcomed Jesus. And whoever welcomed Jesus, welcomed God, the one who sent Jesus. What an honour. What a responsibility. Jesus then made a rather curious reference to hospitality and prophets, and that made me think of Elisha, a prophet in the First Testament. He was travelling through the town of Shunem when a woman from the town offered him hospitality in the form of a meal with her and her much older husband. We never know her name, but this became a bit of a habit. Whenever Elisha's ministry took him to or near Shunem, she would give him a meal. A while later, particularly after she realised that Elisha was a man of God, she got her husband to help her to make a room for Elisha in the roof chamber of their house so that there was somewhere for him to stay overnight whenever he was travelling through. Elisha was so appreciative of the woman's hospitality that he wanted to offer something in return. He discovered that she and her husband had no son and no likelihood of having one. And so he promised her that she would have a son in time. She was very sceptical, fearful of being bitterly disappointed if the promise wasn't fulfilled. But just as Elisha had said, the woman did have a son, but then, sadly, some time later, he died. The woman went to find Elisha to chastise him for giving her so much sadness and false promise. But Elisha wouldn't give up on her. He returned and brought her son back to life. Hospitality can challenge and change the nature of our relationships. It can create a bond that brings two strangers together. Two people who might be in or from situations that are completely different and which are beyond the previous experience of the other. A reciprocity develops in which there is no longer host and guest or insider and visitor, but a new space is created in which each can listen, 
value and honour one another. And so we come back to the glass of water. I wonder if you had ever thought that such a small act of hospitality, the giving of a drink of water, could be so crucial in building the kingdom of God. And yet we hear in the final verse, whoever gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these would lose their reward. To offer welcome to one of Jesus' newly commissioned disciples, one of these little ones, with even a cup of cold water, is to offer welcome to Jesus. And to offer welcome to Jesus is to offer welcome to God. One writer even wrote, no hospitality, no gospel message. And perhaps this gives us food for thought, both as individuals and in our various roles in our church. Practising hospitality opens up the possibility that our perspectives of others can be changed. That we shall see the newcomer or the stranger, not as other, but as beloved. It opens up the possibility of creating a space in which all of us, all of us little ones, realise that each of us is loved equally by God, that we each have understandings and experiences to value, to share and to accommodate with one another. And that, in turn, has a crucial part to play in bringing in God's kingdom of forgiveness, healing and hope. And so to finish a prayer, gracious and loving God, you offer abundant hospitality with space for all to enter in and dwell. May we always be willing to offer a generous welcome to all who come knocking on our doors. And through these encounters, may we all come to know more of your love, your forgiveness, your healing and your hope. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing again now. As I've said before, if you're finding it hard to sing uh, along at home because you just find it a little bit uncomfortable, don't worry. You can listen to the music and you can use the words of the song as a prayer. It's the song, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. And as you listen, you may want to ask God, that he would open our eyes to the needs of others. And you also will get a glimpse of Catherine's beautiful garden. And now our service continues as Sue leads us in our prayers. In our prayers this morning, when I say within our darkest night, please reply, let your light shine. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of all creation, you hold the depths of the earth in your hands. You are closer to us than the air we breathe. Fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. 
Give us strength and courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you, or hide our light inside ourselves. Renew in us a sense of joy. Painting the dark shadows around us with your light, your love and your promises. Hear us today as we pray for a world so often darkened by evil, power, greed and need. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. Lord, this morning we pray for your church at work all over the world. We pray for all who are spreading your word and showing your love by example. We pray for everywhere in the world where the coronavirus has ended lives, broken families and destroyed working life. For so many there is limited health care and even more limited clean water supply. We thank you for all who work to make a positive difference, whatever the circumstance. May they see your light, feel your strength and power and know the truth of your promise that we shall not be overcome by the dark shadows of life or the darkness of human nature. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for anyone who is struggling to cope today. For all who are desperate for life to return to normal, and for those who now find lockdown a place of safety and feel reluctant or anxious about beginning to take new steps forward. We pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. Help us at St John's as we make careful plans to begin opening church simply for private prayer. May our planning be sensible and responsible and guided always by you. We know we can always come to you, wherever we are and whatever our circumstance. You are always there, ready to listen. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of life, we ask for your healing power and calm for all who are enduring pain and illness. And we take a moment to remember all whose names are in our hearts. We also pray for anyone who has lost a loved one recently, for all who feel grief and upset. We know your everlasting light shines with us in moments of great sadness and great joy. Within our darkest night, let your light shine. God of love and hope, renew in us a deeper sense of who we are in you. Help us to be aware of your presence each and every day. Make us instruments of love, joy and praise May our words, actions and lives be living examples of your forgiving, healing and life-giving love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. 
and let's declare our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul is going to lead us in our final song this morning. It's a song called My Lighthouse and it might be new to some of you, so uh, listen or join in as you feel comfortable. Slinging in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. The silence you won't let go. In my questions, your truth will hold. Your love will see me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I'll follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will just promise you will carry me to the shore. To the shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore. I won't feel what tomorrow brings. With each morning I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I'll follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Right before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Right before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Right before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. Right before us, you're the brightest. You will lead us through the storms. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I'll follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Safe to shore. Our final prayer and blessing. Go in the name of Jesus, to follow the way of Jesus, to love with the love of Jesus, and to be sustained by the peace of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord bring you peace this day and in the days to come. Amen.